got a responsibility to convince the rest of their choice, one way or the other. It's hard to understand unless you've been there. <laughs> and uh, we're not always correct but uh, at the audition level, but we are almost invariably correct at the, at the tenure level. Yeah, because by that time you have information. Yeah. And I suppose that people who have not worked in such an environment would only imagine trouble, that you'd be at your, your, each other's throats, that somebody would be so controversial that they would divide the orchestra. But I think what I'm getting from you is that the Berlin Philharmonic has sort of an organizational culture in which you move away from things like that. You don't want division. You don't want controversy. You want constructive work together. Controversy can be productive. Yeah. Confrontation on issues can be productive. Um, I'm, we, I, we are more concerned that our, our organization, our, our ensemble, our, our, this institution which we've been entrusted with by our forefathers in the orchestra, we will have to hand, hand on again to those who come after us, that we have a fiduciary responsibility and an artistic responsibility to preserve, maintain, strengthen, and, and, and enhance the, the orchestra known as the Berlin Philharmonic. Um, complacency can be just as fatal as, as uh, uh, arbitrary hostility. Each individual situation will, will have a different kind of climate surrounding it. But the key thing is to keep the, the, the goal in mind. What are we trying to achieve here? What are the important issues? Are we arguing about something here that, where the argument itself could prove to be healthy for the organization, or is right. it destructive? And if it's destructive, then, of course, let's get off it. And somebody listening to this might say, well, Fergus, Fergus is clearly a balanced, sober sort who can see all sides. This may surprise you. It might surprise your wife. But <laughs> somebody listening to you now might think that. But then they would say, again, with this suspicion that I think a lot of Americans have about situations that work cooperatively. They would say, but surely there are some people in the orchestra who are completely unreasonable and uh, nobody can talk to them and nobody can work with them. And this organizational culture that's being described here, it can't really extend to everybody, can it? Why not? Yes, we do. And there have been on occasion difficult individuals even reasonable individuals who become difficult or they could be having a bad day. Uh, but it's a little bit like a family. You know, you have to put up with each other. You have to find a way to get around it and move on to the next day. You, have, you can't let it become a situation where the tail is wagging the dog, where a single one or a handful of individuals uh, become so obstreperous that we decide to sacrifice the whole structure and all our, uh, hmm. all our goals just to deal with the, the few bad apples. The, the, the key, these two, two fundamental key elements to begin with, the choice of our own players and the choice of our music director, means that the ultimate and primary authority for the artistic responsibility, the artistic future of the orchestra resides in, in the, the musicians. The in the musicians yeah. And everything else derives from that. Uh, therefore, the, the empowerment of the musicians is paramount. That means once you've been empowered and you have empowered yourself, you are now bearing an enormous responsibility. Um, you have authority, which comes with empowerment. You also have responsibility. And uh, everybody loves the authority. You know, it's fun to be able to throw your weight around, but very few people actually enjoy the responsibility which comes with it. Um, that's one of the things we're looking for in players when we test them out in a, in a probationary period. We assume they know how to play their instruments. Have we heard that at the audition? We assume they're great musicians. We've heard that. We've, we know that. We want to find out, are, they, are their shoulders broad enough and the legs strong enough to carry this institution for the, the length of their time in the 30 or 40 years in the orchestra, to be active stakeholding participants in, in this operation. And does it make you, as an ensemble, play better? Indi indisputably. Mm -hmm. We take more risks, we have more fun, we stretch further, we dig deeper, we, have more, we, we, we enjoy more passion, more viscerality, more emotion, we go <laughs> flat out, we, we have a ball. And why are you able to take more risks? Talk about that a bit. Because you trust each other more? Because yes. you know what baseline you're coming back to? Or just because... All of that, all of that. But we're probably wired that way to begin with. It's probably something wrong with our brains. That and that's with. probably who you're looking for also. Yes, people given, given the choice of two ways of doing the same thing, we'll, uh, a typical philharmonic will take the more dangerous way, mm -hmm. just for fun. Can you give an example from some actual piece? of somebody taking a risk? Well, this would be for the horn players in the audience if they're listening. Sure. Uh, we don't use descant horns, which, you know, sensible horn players would use a descant horn to make life a little more accurate, you know, and 
fewer chances of, of busting a note. And uh, we are a little bit intimidated by the descant horn for us. Looks like we're having to use a crutch. And then thinking, oh my God, I'll become dependent on the crutch. Oh no, I'm going to go at this straight, straight at mm -hmm. the bull, straight at it. And we get away with it. Does it mean that, for example, principal players will take um, some extravagant phrasings that they might have not risked <laughs> in another orchestra? <laughs> oh, I'm sure they would have done it in another orchestra mm -hmm. too. Um, phrasing altogether in our band is, is a hotly debated issue. I mean, we're constantly, uh, if people have been watching our rehearsals, uh, they often wonder, what a, what a racket that goes on. The conductor stops conducting for a second and immediately pandemonium breaks out. And Wait a minute, pandemonium in which you're talking to each other oh, about the way you play? Playing and fiddling around, and, and uh, the conductor's yeah. trying to make no, himself. Wait, 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 wait. Are you talking to each other about the way you play? Yes, yeah. Because this is also not too well known, to put it mildly, oh. in America. No, well, you see, we have a, another one of our commandments is uh, mutual criticism is uh, not only tolerated, it's almost required. Forgive it. So if you hear the piccolo player playing something that you don't think quite cuts it, mm -hmm. What do you do? How you do you? Them. What do you? You tell them. You tell them at the rehearsal, in front uh -huh. of everybody else, uh -huh. privately, all of the above. Any of those. Any you of those. You have to choose your moment, choose your weapon, choose your choice of words, and you would be, it would be reckless, perhaps, to to be unnecessarily ab abrasive and and to do that in the in the wrong environment. But uh, a little bit of diplomacy, but a, a, but a, a firm opinion too. Hmm. And I suppose it also depends on what the nature of the problem you're talking about is. Of course. Yeah. Well, give an example of somebody who said something about you. Hmm. Uh, play that longer and give it a crescendo. You don't, don't disappear. And this is not the conductor saying that. No, this would be the horn player beside me. Ah. And it wouldn't be the first one, it would be the guy behind me. And, I said, and my response was, you're right, but I was just saving myself. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, fine, but I needed to have you push there. I didn't know what was happening. You were, you were missing. I think you should say which horn you sit in. Which I was playing. I was sitting at that time on second. Second. Okay. I think. Yeah. And so the third horn might say to you, "I, think it, I, I think need it, you." I think it was sixth behind me. Okay, you. sixth. Yeah. Somebody over the big shoulder. piece. Okay. Yeah. So they say, "I need you to do more here," yes. and this doesn't go through the conductor, and it's not something you whisper. Uh, no, no, no. no. I mean, later on, it's just something that comes up in rehearsals. Yeah. Fiddle players are always, at the back of the, uh, the section, they're always offering better bowing suggestions on the concert master. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's very clear why you need such a, a, such a long process of getting tenure, because you need people who are going to thrive in this environment mm -hmm. and fit yeah. and be helpful. Yes, we have to be very active. Yeah. Right, now, do you get fiddle players talking to you about uh, the way you play or talking to the principal horn? Less so, uh, you'll find principal section, section principals mm -hmm. uh, commuting uh, that way to each other. Uh, one of the classic ones is uh, something from the fiddle section up front saying, horns, you're dragging, you're late. And we're saying, you're rushing. <laughs> <laughs> and how is that settled? Um, diplomatically. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I suppose one of the things is you do it again and you try to stay together. And perhaps you can stay together yes. without Quite that sure. having to be Just the very fact of having mentioned it, you'll find the fiddles are not running as much as they were. And we exactly. do play a little quicker. And guess exactly. what? We do meet in the middle. And so then what's the role of the conductor when uh, a dispute like that mm -hmm. comes up, when a situation like that comes up? Referee in a football match. <laughs> <laughs> and only to be invoked when necessary. I gather. Somebody as diplomatic as, as Simon Rattle uh, knows precisely when, when to jump in and actually correct the situation, say, actually, Horns, you are late, mm. and the strings are not running. Or um, say, sorry, gentlemen and ladies, and the, you know what, the horns are right, to my ear. But or, also, not only diplomatic enough, but smart enough to know that you are going to make him sound much better than most orchestras uh, could. Well said. <laughs> you pick all the conductors who conduct. For you? Um, indirectly, yes. Directly, no. The time it would take to sit down and make a, a list of the conductors we'd like to see next season and call their agents and negotiate with them and see who can do what.